Okay. Hi, everybody. This is The Shade's Tale, a, an Iron Claw 2nd Edition actual play game. Um, we're going to go around the table and introduce our players, and then we're going to do a recap and pick up where we left off last week. Um, usually we start with Theta, but Theta has got to post his stuff in the chat about his player. So, we'll start with Ark. Ark, tell us about your character today, Connor. Looking up the notes, are we? <laughs> yes, I am Ark Lloyd. I play Connor Lavera de Ecrevis, the brazen raccoon knight, whose motto is one hand washes the other. All right. And Griff, why don't you take it away for you and for Theta's characters? All right. I'm playing the anonymous local doctor, the Armadillo Almoner. He has an evangelical personality, and his motto is first, do no harm, second, get paid. Meanwhile, Harmon over here, Harmon de Polier, is the donkey soldier with a personality of relentless, and his motto is victory or death. His goal, as is the rest of ours, is to deliver Goatly's parcel to Harrogate. <laughs> oh, Goatly. All right, yes. and last but not least, <laughs> we've got Rafferty playing Anushka. Hello, world. Yes, I'm Norman Rafferty. Today I'm playing Anushka, the Microbat Messenger, where my motto is no, no fear and serve with joy. Okay. Um, and Griff pointed this out to us, but currently there's only one party goal, which is to help deliver the package, the Dubois package, to Harrogate on behalf yes. of one <laughs> Goatly. Uh, Good Goatly. Um, you guys have been traveling for, I believe it's eight days now, along the Via Salutis, the main arter arterial road that runs across the width of Calabria. And you are accompanied by a group of three Dubois caravan merchants. Um, they are led by a small pygmy pygmy goat known as Tall Otis, who you found has a very bad temper, um, and two of his drivers who are uh, uh, cattle. Um, and along the road, you also picked up a new traveler um, who is currently, I'm not even sure, she's probably told her name to uh, Harmon. Uh, this is a new ally of Harmon's, uh, Hua Jiao who is a sheep and she had been robbed on the road. She doesn't have much and uh, everyone believes that she is sort of a beggar, but she has tried to express to Harmon that she's here for a purpose. Unfortunately, there is a language barrier. So, so far it's been hard to get in, uh, incredibly specific about that. Um, last session, you guys had just gotten your major way through three corners for it. You found that uh, the people of Triskelion, or the, mm, I guess the soldiers of Triskelion, still have a bit of a thing for Connor, and they tried to trap him in the city, but he skirted around it. They interrogated his so his known associate Anushka, and uh, you guys managed to break free of their of their checkpoint and all make it out in one piece. However. You left your carriage back there, which has since been impounded. So you're one carriage light, but you still have two wagons and the war wagon that is uh, currently painted in Connor's family colors. And we can pick up just about where we left off. You guys, uh, I believe it was the doctor and tall Otis had snuck out of the city, disguising themselves as commoners and had posted up with the rest of the group just outside of the... Uh, sight range of the Three Corners Fort along the Via Salutis Road. If we can get back within 30 days, we can probably, uh, we can file an injunction to get your wagon back. <laughs> get the wagon yeah. back. Uh, and as far as uh, other details on the side, I've gone ahead and sold back Insider with Shalon Saldre, and I've purchased Improved Career. I'm now an even better almoner. Hey, nice. I read more books, and I'm still not smarter for it. <laughs> well, I learned to read. Yeah. That was the last question. Harmon raises a good point about taking the legal route to get your carriage back. It's currently as far as 
De La Vega and the Royal Guard are concerned, you're enemies of the state. Honestly, like, the best outcome of that route would be, like, getting imprisoned with the cart or something, you know? They put in your cell. Well, that's the at last. with the legal route of taking it back, is they could accuse you of being enemies of the state. But you are, an, but you're over to apply. You're not part of their state. And seeing yeah. as Denmark and England are good friends. <laughs> Diplomatic immunity. Perhaps. I don't know. It's worth checking out, though. Well, we are at least on the road together again. On the road again, uh, I believe we would still follow the hierarchy of the Rinaldi. I mean, yeah, typically, you're right, like, they're at least nominally at the top of that that pyramid. Um, but we've established over the course of our of our campaign so far that the politics are very confusing and uh, possession is nine tenths of the law and it generally is you know who are you dealing with in the moments when it comes to these kinds of, of issues what can the law get away with uh enemy of Rinaldi is an enemy of the avortapois right yeah i mean technically all right so as i said uh you guys have been traveling for about eight days. You are, appearance-wise, yeah, in terms of, like, how how it should work and how it actually works can vary, depending on who you're dealing with. Um, you guys have been... You are coming up on the uh, Granvert River, a uh, large channel used for trade and transport that cuts across the Via Salutis Road. You are... Um, Let's see. Yeah, you are approaching the wooded area that marks the border of this large uh, river. Yes. No? Sorry, I thought someone was going to say something. Okay, so yes, you're approaching the area, um, and you've been here before. There are uh, sort of, it's not even a full town, but there is sort of a... a small mercantile district where the ferry makes dock um and as you guys approach you can see that a lot of these buildings are wave are are flying banners of the doloro colors the boar clan seems to have claimed this area for themselves um there is a bit of a, a campsite set up of very disgruntled looking merchants and as soon as you approach you begin to hear whispers that they're not letting people cross so good job for doctor tall what, Otis. to give us a ferry i mean i'll 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 go up and pay for it if we need to or well no that that's uh our driver should have the money for that i'm not paying for this getting us through in general I mean, I'll say hello to people for you, Sir Connor, if that's what you want. Well, they're dollar they're your people. But if, if you want me to talk to them, I'll talk to them. <laughs> well, we'll talk to them together. We'll have a nice, jovial conversation to get us across the river. Did the town since we've been gone? I don't think this is where Mage Cross used to be. This is just the river crossing, isn't it? Yeah, this is the river. This is the ferry landing, and... Um... The last time we were we came this way, uh, we totally for uh, we I did not include this as part of your travel, mm -hmm. but this time we are because at that point you guys had pointed yeah, out to so, me that like yeah it's a big deal crossing this river so here we are if we if we can get the ferry and get across quickly because I don't know if we're being pursued right so uh. Is there anything we might have to do, actually, to get a ferry? Is there, like, a long line here or something? There's all, almost always a line, but this yeah. will cost money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you guys, you can get in the line. We can also get ahead of the line by spending more money. <laughs> right. Given that uh, there was a bit of a dramatic escape recently, it might be best to get towards the front of that line. Uh, so, Sir Connor, if you want to work with me, we'll go ahead and uh, impress upon people the importance of us getting to the front of this line. Yeah, you've got negotiation, right? Yep, I do. Yep. 
and no one in the party actually has bribery. One of my favorite it, gifts. Hmm. Yep. <laughs> uh, so how about some will negotiation then? I like it. I think this is also a good opportunity to throw your weight around if you wanted to uh, use your negotiation dice, Connor. All right. Yeah, so Connor, are you assisting me or am I assisting you? I have 2d6. What do you have? Uh, I have a d10 and a d8. Okay, I'll assist you. Yeah. <laughs> you have one d8, I believe. I don't think I have a uh, team player. That'll still do it. That's three successes. Not bad at all. Okay. Um, Doctor, as you sort of make your way up this line, and Paul Otis is, uh, he just is in a foul mood, looking at this line and cursing, and um, you decide, probably for the best, if you guys can can make haste. So you start to make your way through this line um, very politely, I assume, right? Like, what does it look like as you're... <laughs> as you're uh, talking with these individuals who are, have been waiting on this line for what seems like quite a while? Uh, well, I think um, uh, that's a good question. Man, I was not ready for that, actually. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was not ready for how am I actually getting my way to the front of this line? I think I'm more or less distracting people as, uh, as Sir Connor moves sort of forward ahead. Uh, hmm, okay. Of course, doing my proselytizing and saying, oh, yes, you know, of course, uh, the light shines on us all, and it would, of course, shine all the more greatly if you were to do a good deed today for us, especially for me, you see. <laughs> I have connections. Have you read the book? I have a chat book, if you would like one. Oh, my goodness. You're... <laughs> the doctor is just... I don't know. I like how every... I do like how every, like... um influence or charisma based role you know social role that you make boils down to you um proselytizing and that's good but ones at the and same bad time ones. he's so self-aware he realizes no one wants it and his tactic is constantly like you want to read this right go go away it's Jeez. true it's like the ultimate oh, this chap must be something like a chick track Oh gosh, so. there's like an armadillo in there just going, it's like, and they didn't want to listen to him because he was old and boring. I like the idea that you're going down the line and you're like, hey, do you have a minute to speak about the Lord? And everyone goes like, uh, no, but I think that guy in front of us did. And then you talk to them and they're just like, oh, I can just pass this forward. Sure, go right ahead. It helps well, that you have... You run into the guy who really does want to talk to you about the Lord and then you're the one who gets all stuck. You're screwed. One of these days. Um, but luckily I for you, for all those twelve people I buried in my basement, <laughs> I have so I need forgiveness, Father. Please, there's so much blood on my paws. Hundred times with my own mother. <laughs> well, I don't think a little reading won't do for you. You're definitely literate. Here you go. Don't worry, the light saves. Anyway, you make it to the front of this line. Um, you and Connor both. Uh, at the front, there is a very wide boar who is crouched, and he's currently uh, processing some kind of documents for the person at the at the head of the line. Um, but you kind of muscle your way to the front and uh, let them know that you're in a bit of a hurry. Um, and he looks at you, and he looks at Connor, and he says, um, You're blooded. From, from whence do you hail, knight? I'm Marouge. I am Connor Lavera de Equivis. Hmm. Uh, he looks you up and down and with all due deference says, um, I hate to inform you, sir, but we are not allowing anyone carrying weapons across the ferry at this time. You have entered the domain of the Doloro and we are currently at war with your nation. As such, I'm afraid that I cannot allow you to pass here. Uh, wait, clarify for me. I thought we actually put that matter to rest. Sorry, out of character. Which yeah, matter character. is that? Uh, the, the war. Like, oh, the we, war we, is going we on. Exposed, yeah, we, we exposed yeah. that. The nobility has a hold of it. They kind of know what's happening. They do, but... Man, these yeah. forces. I'm so, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's the war machine, man. It's the war economy. There's yeah. a lot of reasons they want to be at war. Yeah. 
and yeah, I mean, ending the war is a different thing. There, there were. I you, guess we walked away and assumed, or I did anyway. A, a little bit, a little bit. I don't want to say that you guys failed. I, I want to say that there were opportunities to sway things. You guys made some choices. I think they were the right choices. I mean, personally, for mm-hmm. you and what you were doing at the time. But opportunities went by that could have been like, no, no, no. We must stop this conflict. And a lot of it, to me, felt like, okay, well, you guys are more interested in completing these goals, which makes sense, than in actually bringing up that this is an unlawful conflict, right? Or that this is a... Yeah. So there are people in power who have an idea of what's going on in the way that you do. But also, these are two people who... These are two nations that have been basically at war, like a quiet war for a long, long time now. Mm -hmm. And it has boiled over. Okay. Uh, in that case, then, going back uh, towards in-character, uh, they have pointed out Sir Connor cannot cross for weapons, and uh, I'll go ahead and point out, uh, but up ahead is a dangerous road, and this is a merchant caravan. We have precious cargo. We could not possibly make this journey unless, of course, you were to send a contingent of soldiers to to assist us. I mean, you definitely have the forces and manpower for that, and definitely all the time of the world to do so, instead of just simply allowing us to cross with weapons. Okay. Sounds like negotiation. I'd like... Right. This is technically a double-sided negotiation. It is... This is an unreasonable demand. You should just let us cross with re- weapons. Yeah, it's gonna... Uh, it, it's a far... Sh- it's a far shot. It's a long shot. I think I want... I mean, I allow Connor to weigh in and help you with this, too, but it will be four successes to sway this guy. Uh, he's in no... He's in no mood. Yeah, this is already a, a little bit of a... Uh, this is already pushing it. Four is also going to be very difficult in the first place. It, so yes. You'll need Connor if you want any prayer of this yeah. working at all. Right, so Connor has to assist, and I have to get that successful assist. So let's see Would how that goes first, I think. I'm going to throw my ability on this. Like, you know, how mm-hmm. how yeah. would you dare to presume to hinder me in my progress as I do this lawful job for the people? I... If it's appropriate, would music help? I'm going to say this is a situation where I don't think music would help. I, I understand. I, I can see it working in a lot of cases, but it, it, like uh, on the line to, of the DMV, I don't think that music has ever helped anyone play the romantic <laughs> tone. <laughs> okay, well, it's a success for nobility there, Connor. There's one vow I haven't taken. His allies in the back playing some really soulful slap right. bass. So I do have knack available, and that might be very important going ahead. But with the nobility, that has at least pushed this ahead by an extra d8. Okay, let's see how you can do. So we are at three successes Wrong. already, and if I go ahead and push my evangelical personality... Oh is my god! A marvelous success, as I literally batter them over the head with the realities of what's happening, that we're a merchant caravan... <laughs> This is why we're armed and need to be armed. There's literally nothing we're going to do except go up the road, and there's bandit territory just beyond. So clearly you want to immediately abandon your post and protect us, poor innocent people within your territory. (laughs) Right? That's exactly what you're planning, right? Because it would be terrible and and besmirch your own consciousness and your soul in the light of Salumer to not assist us, right? This. If one of you were to take my weapons, I would require that you follow us until we get out of your domain upon the other side, whereupon you would surrender my weapons back to me, and I'm sure that would not be an inconvenience to you, dear people. Oh, man, yeah. He is, uh, like, as you guys are bearing down on him, he keeps glancing to the left, like, he's supposed to have someone else in the booth here with him, and they're just not there, and he's like, wants to call for the manager, but you're not giving him an opening to do so. <laughs> and eventually, he just caves. He says, like, fine, fine, I apologize, sirs. I, I, I understand your situation, and I, I suppose it's, it would be unlawful of me to uh, request a, a noble to release his uh, armaments in this situation, but I... 
I have my orders about crossing the river. If you wouldn't mind, um, I, I need to send some some men with you, just uh, chaperones. You'll be able to keep your, your weapons on you, but these men will have to stay with you for your crossing. This is, this is the best that I can do. And you will still, I'm afraid, have to pay the toll to cross the river. Of course, of course. We would never think of doing something like that, uh, of just going without paying. But while I'm here, might I need you in a chat book? <laughs> um, yeah, he, he just says, like... Uh, I'll go ahead and just leave it here, and I'll just, like, put it on the desk in front of him. Just pat it. Smile. Oh, my gracious. All oh, right. Yeah, yeah, like on top of everything else, it's just like, and have you let the Lord into your life? Um, <laughs> he's like, I'm, yeah, I'm a druid. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a luterist, right? Um, okay. He nods. You guys can hear mumblings from behind you of uh, the disgruntled people in line who you have cut ahead of. Um, it, yeah, it's it's. Not a good look, but when you turn to, to look at them, everybody shuts up pretty quickly. And Otis gives them all smug glances as he drives his wagons to the front. The ferry will arrive in half an hour, and at that point, uh, you guys are basically at the head of the line. There's enough room for you and maybe a dozen other... Uh, actually, well, I don't know. If they're all merchants with goods, probably like three or four other people are going to get onto this uh, rather large ferry as it pulls up um and you have chaperones as well but other than that uh it does pretend bad stuff happening no what, what are you talking about there's nothing bad gonna happen you guys you guys managed to pay the toll cross the ferry you actually didn't even wait uh, burn that much time so whoever is pursuing you from three corners fort they're gonna have to probably wait for the next one Oh, that much, yes. The Dolaro have invaded the Rinaldi territory. That's major. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so. Nothing, um... Uh, as you cross the Rubicon. I mean, the Grand Vert. I'd like everybody to give me mind and observation. Oh, boy. Maybe I should get some glasses. Just double checking. No observation. I just got that D six. Um, yeah, the doctor just sitting, please. This is danger sense will not apply here. You guys are not in imminent danger. I can tell you that much. No observation, doctor. Interesting. And then okay, so Harmon's not going to roll. That's fine. What's this roll? Mind and observation. Correct. Yeah, I don't have observation either. Wow, Harmon chooses not to roll. Observation. But I don't roll anyway. It's uh, minus D6. We just stumble into things. That's why. I have searching. I can tell you where everything was. Okay, fair enough. Is that a botch? Oh, gosh, it sure is, isn't it? Take a dip in the river. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so, uh, Connor, normally you don't have trouble with, uh, water voyages, but something about the way that this ferry lurches as the wagons and the dray climb on it, I don't know, you just get a little queasy, you're not observing a whole hell of a lot, um, it only looks like Anushka is the only one who got a single success here, so, Anushka, I will tell you this much, as the, uh, as you were online waiting to get onto the ferry, you thought you saw someone that you recognized. They were wearing a cloak, and you don't really know from where. You can't place them. But hmm. this individual you saw before, and then as you kind of looked for him again as you were getting onto the ferry, you lost track of him. Of them, no, whoever I, they were. In my line of work, I meet a lot of people. It's true. It's true. At this point, it's more like a an inkling or a feeling than anything. And again, it, it doesn't you don't feel like you're in any immediate danger, but you're like, huh, maybe like deja vu, that kind of thing. In any case, um, 
you guys make landing at the far side of the ferry. You, uh, nothing terrible or earth shattering happens as you, um, basically part ways with your Doloro, uh, bodyguards. They will tell you in no uncertain terms that you are now, uh, well, in disputed territory, the Doloro, uh, wants you to, you know, behave yourself, stick to the road, essentially, because it's dangerous and they won't be held accountable for bad things that happen to you. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, people are still crossing. Really, this checkpoint is more like them throwing their weight around. Um, and I think it, it has more to do with the fact that um, Connor is has is nobility from the Avoir de Pois that's holding it up. Um, and also the price went up. So this doesn't affect you guys because Otis is still paying. But yeah, the price for crossing the ferry has gone up. Okay. Yeah. All right. Congratulations. You are on the far side of the Grand Vert. Yay, progress. You guys, um, we're going to say another day passes uh, uneventfully. You can see that there are, at this point, um, they're sort of like... A, a, backup of travel coming from the other direction down from Harrowgate but after you get far enough from the ferry proper you uh it starts to thin out there's not a lot of people traveling here and those that are traveling seem to be traveling in large numbers and are bringing uh mercenaries like yourselves along with them yeah so a you, lot of the a lot mm. of the traffic here would be river traffic yeah we're, we're heading towards the big timberlands yeah, where they, uh, yeah, where they transport timber. Well, a lot, a lot of it's floated downstream, but, uh, because remember, this is, you know, the Middle Ages, so coal is rare. Uh, a lot of our stuff is going to be wood. Yep. And yeah, it's easy to just send things just... downriver and let them just float. It's not like you can hurt a log if it beaches. Well, you can, but you just do it fast. And let's not forget that we have one of the biggest cities in the entire world downriver from here. Yup. Best place to sell it. That's probably what a lot of the holdup is when you try to ferry across the river is you gotta get through the freaking log jam. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. Barges and uh, things. Fun of bureaucracy. It's what you guys love about in fantasy, right? Bureaucracy? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, actually, I have a question. Because when I, I think about, like, uh, transporting logs, I don't know, I have this image in my head that people were just floating logs down river. Did they put them on boats, or did they, like... Well, some I, logs I assume, float. Right? I mean, big, you yeah. can float big logs, but some wood won't. Uh, and then you have uh, deadfalls, which, you know, are just branches. You can't really float those. And then there's right. charcoal, where you burn the wood in advance so it makes smaller, more compact. So, uh, some of everything. Gotcha. Interesting. Okay. Well, that's behind you now. Um, you guys yep. are, uh, you're making, uh, it's your second, uh, yeah. Let's say it's the night after you cross the Grand Vert River. You're, um, looking for a nice spot to make camp. You come across an area that has obviously been cleared for such a purpose, um, but you catch sight of something in the distance that is very troubling to you. There is a another uh, group, a small group of tents accompanied by a carriage that is ornately decorated. Your guess would be perhaps a circus or uh, traveling thespians of some stripe. But um, you can hear shouts and signs of, of struggle. And as you look, as you squint into the failing twilight, um, you can see a, uh, a raccoon who is 
sort of running towards you. He's shouting, help! Help! And then a, uh, a dole, sort of a large-eared canine, uh, approaches him from behind and uh, knocks this raccoon down on his ass and draws a short sword and presses it against this raccoon's throat. The notable feature of this dole is that he's wearing a brightly colored bandana wrapped around his face to hide his identity. Quite obviously, a highwayman of some description. Uh, Otis turns his head away and says, um, we have still some light left. We can press on and find a, well, a less, less occupied campground. Uh, Sir Connor, anything to say about this? <laughs> Start playing my music. Harbage is going straight in, it seems. Okay. okay I'm ready to... Uh, Here we go. Time. All right, Harvin. Let's see. Jumping straight to the rescue. Not even paid. Yeah. He'll help him. Helping? Yeah. Sounds like the right thing to do. Might not be the tasty way to do it. Okay. Well then. I'm going to drop you guys over to a new map. You can drag out your tokens. I'll drag out some tokens. Let's see. Where is he? Oop. These guys are going to be up here on this rise. You guys can be anywhere along the road here to start. I'll go ahead and just say, like, caravans, like, maybe around here. I don't see where you're pinging, actually. Oh, yeah, I see the caravan. I got gotcha. you. Um, yep. And we'll say that the... I haven't actually checked the scale on this map. I probably should, but we're going to say... Here's the status legend. Um, uh, that's, that's about a meter. Got three of these bandits, and this will be the... Uh, these guys will be your innocents over here. Um, most of these guys are shaking them down. And this dude... Was there running for help. Okay. So we've got the party real split right now with half of you guys up at the top of the road and half of you at the bottom of the road. Um, let's say that yeah, you guys I are... I think too yeah. about there. Sorry, what was that? Our... Oh, Kong's a fast climber. He can make it up to the... Uh, yeah, so rocks. I'll go ahead and, like, just move the, the impromptu caravan up there. <laughs> yeah, that's... Okay, that works. Everyone else decided that's the place. There we go. Okay. Looks like Harmon got his focus. Wrong roll. I meant to roll initiative. Yeah. Yeah, what is mine? These dudes are just going to root. Nothing. nothing uh, fancy. I will opt not to roll initiative. I will not even have my rod ready. I'll oh, just be okay. sitting on the cart. As uh, Harmon springs into action, and Hua Jiao right takes up her cue and begins playing music, Otis is going to slap his face in exasperation and say, "Ah, there's other campsites." Uh, I lost my Otis again. He keeps getting Irish. But there's other campsites. This is a waste of our time. Undo risk. Oh, fine. He throws up his hands and drops the reins and just kind of like crosses his arms. Pouting. Um, looks like you guys are all ready to go. So, uh, and you're initiating combat. So you guys can take your first moves. Dash guard attack. Um, all right. This guy is going to try to counter you for all of the good that that will do him. Oh, you're out of his range. Okay, then I guess he's just parrying.
2d6. Whoop-bam! Haha! -ha, look at my high six. I count one, two, three, four, five. Five damage. And these guys are decked out in 3d6 resolve with leather armor. So 3d6 to soak. Soaks two of the five, which means that he's all kinds of hurt, reeling, afraid, and injured. And done. As Harmon uh, closes distance, he knocks this poor, helpless highwayman back, leaving a, a horrible gash across his arm uh he's bleeding profusely and the raccoon who is on his knees begins to scrabble away from him whimpering at the sight of the blood that has been spilt who wants to go next connor will go next the um irregulars are guarding the rest of the caravan good makes sense that way we don't have to put them on the map <laughs> It is, I should probably do that. I'm sorry that I forgot to, but I think you guys are gonna, not going to need them for this. So, yeah. So let's see. Uh, you want to dash and then sprint. I mean, yeah. Oh, you guys don't have the guards with you anymore. Are you just talking about the Doloro guards in a? Oh, oh. I thought the last thing you said was a couple would have to escort us. They yeah across the river. Okay, so, okay, so that's fine. We still have the war wagon. Still have the war wagon. Yeah. There's my first move. Okay. And then I'm going for the rest of these guys because that one's out of commission. So there's my um, sprint. Yeah, that's sprint. And Potter's mm -hmm. going to follow. Um, I read in the uh, omnibus that it's only body strength in climbing rather than body speed in climbing, like in later iterations of the game. Uh, you may but, be right, yeah. So Potter is going to climb up there and will guard and then climb. Oh, okay. Okay. He doesn't have any climbing dice. Yeah. That's right. He's not a raccoon. Little raccoon. Oh, he does have climbing. He's a porcupine. They climb for some reason. Yeah. Watch the trees, buddies. There's porcupines up there. Okay, so he gets up there. <laughs> and that's uh, our turn done. So let's see about the uh, good doctor. Well, let's see. I don't think I really need to prepare any kind of spell here. It looks like you guys got handled. These bandits aren't too tough. Um, and I don't have the ability to give focus to anyone, not the least of all the the people who are scrambling around. I, mean, uh, I can't that, try to you. direct them and encourage them our way. That might still be a rally roll. Uh, what do you think? Uh, I think you should try and focus. Uh, I could just focus, yeah. Oop. I'll do it from here. So, yeah, focus turn. We'll see what happens. Okay. I may simply call out to them, uh, to the people who are being chased, come over here. All right, so are only the bad guys on the map? Who are the bad guys and who are the good guys? Sorry, um, the bad guys are these green guys here. I'm gonna, I can label them. Okay, well, I can't stand idly by and allow commoners to get harmed, so I will take wing and head to the west. And that is not my best roll. But this is not your best day. Uh, which one is the measure? Cool. Thought uh, so. Yeah. Forget this stupid thing. Cool. Yeah. Wow. You were totally in range. 
All right. Uh, well, I have focus because I rolled good on my initiative. So I am going to fly to here. <laughs> uh, let's see. Take aim. I guess. Should I aim? Oh, I'm next to Connor, aren't I? Yeah, I'll fly to here since I'm still within near range. Take aim and shoot at this bandit. Okay. My gun goes off, so you must dodge. All right. We're dodging with not much. D6. And it's a botch. Execute Ouch. this guy. Um, <laughs> well, I think this fight just ended, guys. Um, Let's see. Uh, Wait, where is that? Yeah, it is. Okay. Oh, dear. Okay, well, that's one, two, plus one, because you botched, is three successes. Uh, this is a pistol, so that's slang, so that's doubled, so that's six, and it has a damage bonus of plus two. That is an eight-point hit to the bandit. I that didn't know that watching your defense caused an extra success on the uh, attack. I thought it was defense? only watching yeah. on the bot on the soap caused to give an extra um, point of damage. Both of them do that because mm, we wanted wow. a rule in Iron Claw that says that any attack can instantly kill someone. It also makes sense. I, I think if it was one or the other, I would always forget which is which. So, I feel so, like if you botch it in your defense, you should be taking some extra damage. Let's say you're an, let's say for the sake of discussion that you're an evil bad guy and you want to stab a peasant and kill them. So you can pull out a knife and stab a peasant. The peasant who only has one dodge die can botch that and then makes their soak and they only have one soak die. Botch that. That's two extra points of damage. With the extra two points of damage you did from the stabbing, you could kill a peasant e instantly by stabbing them with a knife. And yep. you wouldn't have to admit, and you wouldn't have to lie about it like you would have to in other role playing games. Well, looking at this guy, uh, he could possibly reduce it from overkill. Yeah, that's an eight point hit. See if you can soak that to just like got, regular got knife three before. successes. There we go. It's gonna be it. And he does three not. successes. Okay. No, so that is, overkills is, him. Is afraid. Uh, that 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 makes all friendly units afraid, and up to the game master what it does to unfriendly units. Because I don't know what you do <laughs> when the first <laughs> explodes. So, at this range, you can see the two other. Um, I'm calling them thespians. The the two other uh wandering performers who are currently being held at sword point by these individuals. They have their hands up. Um, you can see they're wearing traveling cloaks, but underneath that they're wearing sort of like uh, sparkly, sequiny like performer outfits. It's quite clear that they're acrobats of some kind. Um, there's a, a tiny squirrel and there's a large, uh, God, I want to say moose. <laughs> uh, you know what? We're going with it. There's a, a large kind of moose. Both of them look with their hands up. Um, petrified as you guys um but a little bit relieved as you guys charge up over the hill um and you blow this guy away your shot clips him right in the face half of his head explodes splattering a, a fine mist of gore over the squirrel who shrieks um the other dull bandits to his side uh also shrieks and turns and runs for the hills as well as the guy who was being uh almost cut in half by Harmon. So these guys are going to book it into the forest. Do you guys, would you guys like to pursue or leave it as is? I want to reassure people. I want to ask if everyone's all right. Not my land, not my problem. <laughs> all right. Um, the, uh, the moose, his legs are visibly shaking and as soon as the bandits leave and you ask if everyone's okay he just collapses in a heap and huffs um the squirrel begins to wipe her face off she says like ah oh, yes so oh, um well then that oof that was an experience uh thank you oh you saved us thank you so much oh, how can we ever repay you yeah that's directed to you i think I think that's directed to Anushka as the one who is, uh, well, first oh, of all, blew uh, this guy away. Goodness. Uh, just the fact that you're Helen Hardy is reward enough. Okay. She um, 
finishes wiping off the gore and she's going to walk up to the body of this guy and give it a kick and say, serves you right. And then she will look at you and give a theatrical bow and um, say, they call me uh, Tess the Ineffable. And this is my wandering troupe of performers. We were on our way towards the city of Harrogate um, when we were rudely attacked, I should say, by these uh, rapscallions. Um, I-, I must say we don't have a lot in the ways of money, but we do have some food. Would you care to join uh, camps for the evening? The Potter for the uh, Squire or the Ally, Louis Raphael, Alfred Bassett, and Jim. I think we've uh, lost a couple on the way, though. I don't know. Yeah, so they offered to feed all of us. So it's our giant. Yes, uh, that's true. Our, uh, you know, our giant, our my three big friends, and six. Yeah, so there's like a dozen of us. <laughs> there's there is a lot. Um, I wonder, you know what? I, I kind of forgot wow. this. Normally you're supposed to roll at the beginning of the, uh, of the session for this. And we skipped it in a lot of cases, but your, your regular, your irregulars did see action last session, Connor. So once we settle down for the night, I think maybe you should roll to see how many of them stick around. But yeah, back to the, back to the scene. I think that, um, Tess. Yep looks uh well actually no she's unflappable she's super excited to see all of your your whole party and um holding a man's head yeah who knows it is weird but um she seems like he got what he deserved maybe she's seen worse i don't know the first um, job i've made is done any real damage yeah well i mean did like serious damage you know, that pistols are randomly. By the way, I did look it up. It is not a free uh, success if your opponent botches anymore. We got rid of that rule. But still overkilled wow. him, so I'm not worried. Yeah, by a wide enough margin, so it would have still been the same. So, um, okay, yeah. The raccoon who Harmon saved, he's like wringing his paws as you guys make camp, and he's just like, we're not gonna have, we're not gonna have enough. They're gonna, they're gonna go through all of our rations in a single night. And uh, you can hear Tess saying like, that is no way to treat guests, especially those who saved our lives. Be grateful. Okay, so you guys. Um, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful. So, I, hey, I, I, uh, I uh, I'm here to serve. Plus, we can't. Uh, were these uh, bandits colorless? They're just like bandits from the woods. Bandits from the woods. What do you mean specifically when you say colorless? You mean like. Flying any, uh, they, they don't have any insignia. Yeah, they're not like land privateers. They're definitely not like landed or blooded. They're definitely. We're, we're in disputed territory. So if you show up yeah. and saying we, you know, I mean, an outlaw is somebody who is outside the law and just stealing stuff and just stealing for their own. Uh, it, we could be in the domain where people would show up saying, We're the Bisclave and you guys are here lawlessly. So your possessions are forfeit. We could say, no, no, I've got a writ right here. Oh, no, I stabbed you before you got your deed out. Oh, <laughs> darn. Um, I tend to have a very dark sense of humor about these things. So, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, but I'm assuming they're just random bandits. It seems yeah, I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing on them that implies they're deserters. They're not wearing any uniforms. They're just, you know, random people, right? They're kind of, yeah, they're, they're random. They look like they're outfitted. Like, their weapons don't look scavenged they look probably stolen honestly um yeah and you uh i mean they they do have this identifying trait is all of them were wearing these brightly colored bandanas around their faces so there's right. maybe I some sort identify of identify them as, as a gang which we yeah. could use our streetwise to find out who they are all right which one of us is streetwise i say looking at all of us assembled here 
everyone goes quiet suddenly. Yeah, everyone goes Never quiet. seen a street in my life. What are you talking about? Yeah, so this might be some sort of gang insignia, but we don't know. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. The bandanas help when you're in the middle of a fracas for remembering which one of you is on our side. Because no one here in Skyrim has accidentally killed an ally, right? Nope, never. Not even once. Not not me. Couldn't be me. I suppose Uh, we... uh, Well, we loot the bodies. Oh, yeah. um, Doctor, you should say some last rites. This person died by violence while being worldly. Uh, Dusty, dusty, ashy, ashy. Shouldn't have been looking for cashy. Yeah. <laughs> as the doctor <laughs> as the doctor says these <laughs> gives this poor bastard his rights. Um Hua Jiao, I, I'm never gonna remember this name, I just wanna make sure. Hua Jiao, I got it right. Hua Jiao yeah. is has approached the body and is picking through the remains of the poor thing's skull. Um, she pulls out this bandana and kind of glares at it. The bandana that was at one point covering this this bandit's face. Um, she seems very displeased. Um, and she actually takes the bandana and uh, shakes off the gore and will wrap it up and put it, you know, she seems like she's she's planning on keeping it. Mm. And she goes over to the edge of the clearing where the other bandit fled, uh, bandits fled, I guess, and begin snooping around, um, perhaps trying to look for clues. Oh, what? Random adversary generator as well. This. this is the website that has the random character generator, including names. Oh, yes. yeah. Oh, I love this thing. I use it all the time. Okay, good. Uh, but she's looking around. I'd like to go ahead and try to assist her. <clears throat> okay. I don't know what she's looking for, but, you know, maybe I'll find something interesting. All right. Uh-huh. Uh, I do have 3D6 on the roll. I don't know if she has actually a very good search roll. Uh, I mean, she's basically, she's an ally, which means that she's going to have D6s in most things. She's a sheep, and she's a perfect knight but I'm not sure exactly if they get searching. Yeah, Harmon, does Perfect Knight get searching or sheep? And I just have to share this into the chat. That's what Kui wants. <laughs> right? That's a good generator right there. Okay. All right, so the answer is, yeah, I would probably be leading it because I have more dice, but I only get one success. Not unless music helps, yeah. Um, All right, so you basically, as you're poking around with one success, um, you uncover a trail of of just basically disturbed foliage that this guy left in his wake as he was running for his life, and a little bit of blood, too. This was the one that Harmon cut. Um, And you can see as you wade, uh, you know, probably like 50 to 100 feet into this underbrush that there's a marking on one of the trees. It looks to be a, a painted mark, almost huh. like a trailblazer or something. Um, and that strikes you as odd. I suppose they left these marks so that they could actually get find their way back to camp. Not the worst idea, and if no one knows, then, well, you know, it meets Well, they could be hunter's trails or forest trails. They could be legitimate markings. We wouldn't know. We're clueless. I mean, I might be able to at least uh, say it's not one of those. Yeah, I'll say that this thing looks like it was painted. <laughs> make him make an academics ago. roll to know that. Exactly. Well, if you'd like to make an academics roll, you can. You may. Okay. Let me go ahead and pull up my academics because I have I have a good bit of it. It comes uh, with your job. Yup, yup. Just gotta double check. All right, and this will be mind academic. So I got one die of every type, almost. Hmm. Two successes. Two successes. Okay. Oh, that one did not actually go through because that was in a D. There we go. Yeah. So if, three if, successes. If, if, yeah. So two successes would mean if you're just not, you know, it's something some 
if it's only if it's specialty knowledge, he would probably know it. Yes, I read this guide to forestry manual for some reason. Well, here's what here's what you do know. Um, I don't, yeah, and I don't know why you'd be reading that, but yes, uh, you know a thing or two about paints and pigments. Um, if you were going to paint for a trail or like a hunting trail, you would want to use a more permanent paint to do so. Something yeah, that you like would buy at certain. Wood. Yeah, a bunch um, of lead based carbon into the wood, and yeah, oh yeah, exactly, like mineral based paints. This is not. This pigment was basically made from scavenge materials from the forest you don't think it would be very permanent like it might last like a week or two before it was all but you know indistinguishable or, or would completely wash away just from the weather mm -hmm. so um based on that it's quite unlikely that this is an official trail um yeah hmm but i guess given that we we have this blood trail here we know the signs and uh well, there's one right here. It wouldn't be impossible to follow it if that was someone's desire, but who would want to go into the middle of the woods and start a fight? Temporary marks. Well, uh, we would if there was a bounty. I mean, we have, uh, uh, I'm sure the Bisclave uh, would honor Connor's blood. And uh, if we were to do the thief taking. But we do have a mission and we do have a package to escort. Right. Uh, you and Harbin make and points. And I mean, I'm just going to look here at like my gun, which is still warm and just think, and I don't have much stomach for thief taking. Uh, even Harmon wants to stick to the mission and yes. uh, his resolute uh, purpose should be acknowledged. Uh, I'm going to go clean my gun. That's true. The uh, Otis is on your side, too. Um, yeah. He so... says we're not here for bounties to capture bounties or to to safeguard the wood we're here uh we're keeping a tight schedule and i don't intend to deviate from it any more than we already have um but i will say out of character knowledge you guys did come across a bounty for these well for the chroma bandits who were described as wearing colorful bandanas when you were partying down at three corners fort so, right. oh, yeah. so remind yeah. yourselves we would turn that back in at three corners fort wouldn't we uh, yeah, that particular, and that raises its own problems, right? Do, do, do we? <laughs> yeah. Do we have any heads? No, you had one, but you blew it away. Yeah, an, over, an overkilled corpse is not identifiable enough to. Uh, I love Iron Claw. An I guess we have a bandana, but she's gone ahead and put it into her pouch. So no. Well, um, all right. Well, I'm gonna. Ask, uh, and I know I'm saying it's the Middle Ages. Me, I'm no stomach <clears> for this. But it's also the Middle Ages. So let's get a rope uh, and hang this corpse up in the tree. Uh, so when the bandits come back later to find out what happened to their friends, they'll know. I mean, That's I weird. would still say even now, perhaps to just simply bury it. But, you know, if you want to put it no, all to work. I, I think showing the Chroma bandits that we know that they're here, maybe that maybe they will move on and forsake their evil ways. I still don't think it's tasteful, but as you wish. Um, uh, we, well, even, we will not be the only people coming. Yeah, we're not going to be the only people coming this way. So I'm not afraid for us. I'm afraid for others. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The, right. um, as you guys are having this conversation, Hua Jiao has something to say. And rather than try to do this in strange broken English to represent her barely passable or, or barely comprehensible uh, comprehensible Calabrese I'm just going to tell you um, she uh, using the odd word of Calabrese here or there and a lot of hand gesturing and some drawing in the soft dirt she tries to express to all of you that these are the bandits that basically robbed her of all of her possessions um, oh she seems furious, and at this point, I'm going to offer you a goal. If you can return her possessions to her that the bandits stole, Hua Jiao, then that will be worth a gift for you. Well, we could try to come best. Also, um, all right, let's use some geographical knowledge. Mm. If you're bandits and you're stealing things, then your ultimate goal is to fence those things so you can you spend the money on other things. So if you were a bunch of bandits, you'd have to, there would have to be some sort of a, so this is where it gets tricky. 
because you're no. a bandit, so you want to fence stuff. But you can't go to the big city because in the big city, if you're the Chroma Bandits, there might be, you know, people might be tempted to turn you in for the bounty. So you have to go to a place that's big enough that the that you can actually get good money for your stuff, but still small enough so you can blend in with the crowd and not get arrested. So what's the closest place for that? Sorry, I was distracted. I mean, the, the map deliberately doesn't have every single town and stuff oh. mapped on it because we expect Game Masters to make stuff up. Right. And, yeah. I mean, even if we don't know where they go in the end, we do have this trail that ought to go towards their camp. I mean, because they're not going to go, I mean, well, they're bandits. They might get a good sizable amount of loot and then try to fence them later. Right. Who knows how much they may have gotten while they're while they've been out here. I think I even... Uh, uh, that's true. Sorry, guys. Oh, is something happening? No, no, no nothing's happening. I'm, uh, I'm looking up a name generator. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening. So, I suppose if we were uh, to pursue this, we do have the trail. And of course, if we find their camp, there'd probably be an additional trail towards said village if they went off to sell. 